Well, thank you again for joining us. We hope that you did enjoy that bit of the editorial from Johnny Hughes from the studios of 3FM 92.7. You can check them out on social media as always. And we have TV3 Gun as well. It's where we're streaming live currently. We do encourage you, make sure you share the stream. And for want of time, let me just say we're grateful that you've joined us um, for this morning's discussion on big issues. And as always, we have some great, intelligent, beautiful ladies. And we make sure... Um, we have the best when it comes to those who contribute to national discourse, uh, shape public policy, and for us to have um, the bigger chunk of the conversation right here on TV3 New Day. And as always, let me say good morning to Shaibi Mohammed and then also Neo Date Mills. Thank you. Aubrey Ponkaba, Kwesi Mensa, joining us from New York. It's been a while, Kwesi Mensa. Ivan Sebin Samba, please make sure you share the stream. And for all of you who are joining us, please, uh, Daniel. Palioka is also there. But let me just um, also apprise you of those we have in the studio representing the campaign of DM It Is Possible 2024, the government of Nanadu Dankwe Kufuado. Um, we have Loratu Musasaka. Good morning to Good you, morning, Loratu. Papa. You're looking very beautiful, as always. Thank you. Yeah. And then I have Rodalin Ayana representing the Great Alliance, Movement for Change, and all the others as well. Rodal Rodalin Ayana, how are you? Fine. Great, so. great. And then, of course, I have Natre. Natre, how are you? We thank God for the gift of life. We fantastic, are fine. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and then the what woman. Has, what has changed about uh, me? Yeah. Who is and the woman in blue it's today. It's me. I mean, she's a woman thank of all colors. So, Naniya Achimukin Jantwa is a woman of many colors, had been in the extractive industry uh, when it comes to regulation Just of listen. utilities, had worked closely uh, with the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, the PRC, uh, had trained many of us as well as protégés, uh, also done a bit of politics as well, contributes to the extractive sectors or with the Koseka, he's right here. She's right here. How are you? I'm fine. Are you, are, are you going to Jericho today? Yes. Great. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I what? Go, I go with cookie. Cookie. Yeah. Cookie tea. <laughs> anyway, cookie is always prayerful alongside hey, you. As I'm well. always so with always heavy. Good. But as always, let me say good morning to Elis Couture. Elizabeth uh, makes my clothing for me. She is located in Tema Community One, as always, Site Three. And just in case you want to hit uh, me up on social media, uh, Messenger. If you have my number too, I'll give you her number as well. She makes good clothes, especially for men, the captains and all. But in the meantime, let's just surprise you of all that has been happening. Uh, we know that organized labor, they decided to uh, shift away their stance to embark on a strike today. Uh, but it's also because they insisted government had met them halfway. And so based on their assessment, what had been announced to them after their meeting with the president, they were satisfied. So this is what the president himself and the government have committed themselves to. So we'll put that on the screens for you. And um, the measures so far introduced uh, as a countermeasure or a response to all the concerns that have been raised. So we'll put that on the screens for you so you get to know. Measures taken so far, more military personnel, uh, to be deployed, including naval boats to stop mining in water bodies. Uh, there's going to be a ban in forest reserves, immediate suspension of mining and reserves. So it will mean that the implementation of that airline on hold. Tougher prosecution, we are told, four courts dedicated to illegal mining cases with plans for more. National pact, all presidential candidates had to commit to fighting illegal mining. As a new narrative now. And then the government also has asked organized labor subsequently to suspend their strike and work together to address Gallam Say. But we've had a number of them complaining as well. Right. So we will touch base with organized labor sections of them, both those in agreement and those not in agreement with their leadership. All right. Now let's listen to Professor Bransford Jampo of UTAG. <coughs> We would, I'm in touch with my national president. We are holding our own meeting um, this evening. And then I'm telling you that we are not going to go by this charade. We are not going to go by this show of incompetence and gross disrespect.
to other unions for constituting organized labor. Clearly, they came with an agenda. Look, there are so many things that are being said about the leadership of organized labor. And the kinds of things that happened here. Okay, first is those bogus charges and allegations. I mean, otherwise, if you want to meet with organized labor, why do you come with a prepared speech? In the meeting, we were not. I mean, I made my first point. Others, a few people spoke. And if you are speaking, then the chairman gets up and says he doesn't want you to talk. And so if you want to make further suggestions, they, 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 we didn't finish the meeting. And they call you guys to, be, um, to, to, to join the meeting. The 16 public universities have all voted unanimously and overwhelmingly to say that they want to go on an industrial action. And we don't care about what um, disorganized labor wants to do. For example, is it fair, is it fair to describe the leadership of organized labor as being incompetent to describe them as Given the, kind, the, the kinds of things that happen here. Okay, you, don't, you do not call a meeting and then go with a prepared speech. What was the basis means you sat in the comfort of your bedroom with the politician who manipulated you to come and read this to us? I mean, they have people they can manipulate, but not some of us. And so we'll tie back with Professor Jampo with the latest from UTAC. We know there's a, an issue statement that is indicating that they will go ahead based on the quorum or the mass of the numbers who voted for a strike action on this matter. And Loratu, the accusation in town, especially just deducing or making the deduction from Professor Jampo, is that there's been some influence peddling. How did the president get into the heads of organized labor to the point that now they had to vociferously decide to suspend their strike? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Yes. morning. Good morning, too. I like it when you talk calmly. My sisters. They should come yeah. and see you off camera. <laughs> <laughs> like All right. Laura, I think even your opening, your preamble to your question is a... Good enough answer. It's not, it's not a, a fair representation of uh, the facts. what is happening. Yes, because if it's about accusations that can be substantiated or president getting into the heads of people, I don't think that is the way to uh, go because we've not we've all been following this issue from the get-go mm. i mean i've always maintained that uh galam says an issue that we are all worried about because whatever happens the fish you eat the water you drink whatever environment the air you breathe all those uh, little little particles in the air don't know you paparo they don't know me they don't know MPP, they don't know NDC, they don't know a Christian, they don't know a Muslim, they don't know a traditionalist or any other uh, group. They don't know who is in organized labor, they don't know who is not in organized labor. Right, so organized labor um, took the lead or the charge to fight um, Galamse. I mean, obviously, a chunk of the people in the working force find themselves in one group or the other. So, I mean, it's just fair for organized labor to take charge of the majority of people that uh, both in private and uh, uh, private and uh, public sector. So they issued um, a communique giving go uh, government certain uh, conditions. Government didn't sit by. His Excellency the President didn't sit by. He set up a five-member committee. The day, the night that their statement after meeting, that was, I think, sometime in uh, September. I was here the day after when they released their statement. If you remember, we had a uh, discussion on it. And they stated, government hadn't released a statement. They, they stated that um, government had asked for time, but they wanted these things to be done, else they are proceeding on strike. After that, there, been, there were a series of meetings. The latest one was the 8th uh, October meeting. And a lot of things were agreed on. So the minister responsible for information came out with a statement after uh, organized labor still decided that they were going on the strike. So those issues were put out for everyone to know that this was what was discussed. And uh, I mean, in relation to when... Uh, government uh, parliamentary convenes and parliament is reconvening um, on the 15th of uh, October. 
processes will be uh, undertaken to repeal the ally that mandates people to uh, regulate the uh, mining within the forest zones. And also forget that that ally was supposed to cure a certain gray area between the land uh, policy and the Environmental Protection Act. Because in the uh, land uh, policy, you come uh, mining, mining uh, uh, forest reserve. But in the Environmental uh, Protection Act, it seemed to uh, not be clear, but it wasn't uh, against the uh, mining here. But whatever it was supposed to cure, it's obvious that it wasn't able to cure it. So definitely. And this ally was passed by a bipartisan parliament. It wasn't the New Patriotic Party alone that passed that ally in 2022. There are 275 parliamentarians, one independent, 137 from the MPP, 137 from the NDC, that passed this ally. So once they reconvene, then processes will be taken. There was deployment. And I kept on asking one question. In the height of everything, His Excellency the President, after a national security meeting, asked that security, uh, military and police should be deployed to that area. I don't think anybody followed up on it, but that has also been intensified. Since 2017, <coughs> since 2017, that, uh, the Chief Justice then, I think it was uh, Justice um, uh, Theodora Wood, that set up 17, uh, 14 courts for Galamsey cases. Since 2017? Yes. It cannot, be, it cannot be Justice Theodora Wood. Who, who was it? You mean, you wanted to say Georgina Wood? Georgina Wood, sorry. No, Georgina Wood was during when Kufu. Was, so, 2017 was... Oh, you're who? talking about the former Chief Justice, former Sophia Kufu. Justice, Sophia yeah. Kufu. Okay. Well, it was in 2017. Mm. I mean, in the wake of the fight against Galamsey, there were 14 um, um, courts that were designated based on the uh, mining laws and all that to look at Galamsey cases. A lot of effort has been put in, but what does it come to? All these efforts that have been put in. And let's also not forget that organized labor didn't say, well, from the statements I read, they didn't say they are calling off the strike. They said they are suspending it because government has shown commitment to uh, what their demands are and actions are being taken. And even with that, they insisted that they should be part of the committee ensuring that, and that uh, has been done. So it's up to all of us, because if mining is not supposed to be going in a forest area, police is being deployed there, military is being deployed there, right? It also comes to those of us, collective, as citizens who are there, who see anything on toward. I was sad to hear <clears throat> yesterday someone telling me that oh, it looks like uh, even when um, all those operations, Galam Stop and all Laura that were too. going on. The very, the very inferences you make, yes. Galam Stop, yes. the first interministerial yes. committee, etc., yes. the subsequent report yes. by Efrem Pombwati, etc., give us every conclusion that the first initiative had failed. The subsequent initiatives have failed. We have enforcement bodies around, yes. deployed by the president yes. as well as the allied ministers. Yes. And for us to get here means that the solutions didn't work. That's why everybody was agitated or is still Girl, agitated. If you talk about inferences, let's say, I mean, the fight against Galamse didn't start during President Akufuado's time. True. It's been since 1989. Correct me if I'm wrong. There have been processes that have been put in place. And if we are being very honest, one of the most successful fights was the one that President Akufuado led between 2017 and 2019. When there was I don't a man, so, when there What was do you a mean by one of the most successful fights? By what benchmark? That saw the aggressive uh, approach to solving this and problem. And is that the outcome but that we if see you now? Let, if you let me make my... No, you, 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 if you, you, let you me made a specific finish, statement. Yes, if you make me uh, finish my... Submission, mm. then we can all how 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 each how, other. how it Papa was Ro, that fight a successful one? We came into government in 2017. There was a ban on small scale mining. Right. There were people that had licenses that were even going outside their concessions, outside their concessions, diverting water bodies and all that. All those things were clamped. Programs were introduced. One of the things that came out 
was the <coughs> usage of uh, mercury. The mercury ends up sitting in the sediment, the sediments, not in the water. From what uh, experts say, mercury is waterphobic, to put it literally. So it sits in the, the sediments. So now, as we said, most of these water bodies don't even have fish for people to eat. That's, those are the issues we have faced. But the ban and the uh, Enhancement of Minerals Commission, Enhancement of Minerals Commission, especially their monitoring and the, their monitoring department with all the equipment and all that enhance it. One of the issues was also chiefs and people within the community saying that a chief, one, when they had a, a fora with the chiefs, there were a series of meetings with traditional rulers. One of the things that came out was that chiefs would just sit down, someone would just come and say, I have a concession, and they have no uh, say to it. All those things are being dealt uh, with. Now, you can't go into a community and just go and say, you are going to my without recourse to the traditional people, Point because on. it's a collective thing. Rodal, what do you make of all this? started clearing until election 2022. <clears throat> Rodal, what do you make of all this? Um, good morning, Ghana. Good morning to mm -hmm. our viewers. Um, it's interesting that at this particular moment, we're making it look as if there has been a fight, a vigorous fight against Galamse. If there had been, we wouldn't be sitting where we are today discussing it. Um, organized labor had decided to go on a demonstration, and it had to do with our water bodies. Unfortunately, um, they have suspended it, as I understand for reasons best known to themselves. But even before this took place, um, there were so many um, problems coming from various labor groups. Mm. We had the GMA, the Ghana Medical Association, mm. saying that, yes, we, we agree, but we will not be part. Mm. And then we also had um, the Nurses and Midwives Association also saying the same thing. We agree, but we cannot be part because we feel that we are an essential service provider. But what is the real aim of going on this strike or demonstrations or whatever? It's to get government to sit up to its responsibilities. Mm. So I am a bit um, disturbed that <sighs> certain utterances that came out of various people um, was not one that showed that government had a commitment to fighting Galamse. If you get a government minister standing on a, uh, in front of a, a group of people saying that people in Accra are saying that we should ban uh, mining, mm. do you agree? And then they say, oh, no. Yeah, Mirko Duka said this in the Western region when he was meeting with miners. And then you have somebody also, um, the managing director of Gihok, also saying that if anybody, if any worker joins the... Um, strike, then you lose your job. I'll mm. sack the person. And Maxwell that, Kofijuma. Yes, that's Maxwell Kofijuma. And that um, the Galamse issue was of national concern and it didn't concern Gihok. And I was asking myself, how come it doesn't concern Gihok? Don't you use water? Mm -hmm. Don't you use water for the production of your drinks? So how can you sit back and say that it doesn't concern Gihok? And then you also have another person from the ruling party, uh, I think some, is it Kwekubati or something, Boateng, saying that how do you expect a government to place a ban on mining in an election year when we have told ourselves that we are breaking the eight? What did that tell you? It just told me that these people were just out for the votes. The power is all that they are interested in, not the welfare of the Ghanaian persons or the Ghanaian people. So these are things that at least I find very disturbing mm -hmm. that we should place party and power. Um, you think that, that that's what has, has happened? Yes, this is, what, th this is exactly what has happened. All this idea of hula baloo, people not wanting to be part, people taking themselves out and all that, and all these allegations of underground or underhand uh, uh, dealings, it's all because some people feel that the only thing that has to be done is to stay in power and by whatever means possible. But Galamse, this is not the first time Ghana is fighting Galamse. It's been fighting for a long time. 
I remember in 1990, there was the dragnet, Operation Dragnet of AGC. Hmm. The military went in there. And after a while, they were able to do something. It, 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 it went down. <laughs> but it wasn't to the scale that it is now. So I'm, I'm still watching. I don't know if we'll still discuss the, the military being put to use. Um, uh, we will. Yeah, right. okay. Uh, now, okay. So the, the position that was espoused over the last couple of days, even Nawal Mohammed came <laughs> to say that the communicator of government throughout the week since um, I sat down here said, uh, there's not going to be any ban. Now, the ban in itself, if you listen to civil society and the coalition that was le leading all this, was that they wanted a ban that was semblance of what had happened, where the, that moratorium would provide a certain time frame for us to take a certain introspection, and then you do what is right. Because the first initiative um, in the run-up to 2020 did work. Why do you think that the government was feeling reluctant to place that ban to declare state of emergency? Good morning to you, Roland. Good morning, my um, co-panelists at the table. Let me also say good morning to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, the man with a perfect pair of hands to reset Ghana. <laughs> the one with the political will to fight Galamsi, and I'll prove that shortly. And also to greet my member of parliament, Honorable Benjamin Ayukunate, that the people of Lejukuku will retain him and will retire Dr. Okuboy for life. That said, Roland, so you see, organized labor might have called off or suspended, what have you, any term anybody wants to use at this table. They are strike. But the Galamseyers have not called off the Galamse. The threat to aquatic, aquatic life, the threat to human life, the threat to forest life, please, has not been called off. And so if we won't act now, I am sure that very soon nature will cause us to gnash our teeth and act. And I pray that the time that nature decides to act, nature would find the people I will mention in this my submission and their families and deal with them bitterly. Meaning what? <laughs> l let me make my point. So you see, I was, I was actually counting on, and I'm sure if you open your phone lines, you activate your phone lines this morning, a majority of Ghanaians will tell you that they were counting on organized labor to actually win this war against Galamse for us. And this morning, Lorato said that organized labor took charge and you wanted well to fight. To I would mention. You do well not to mention. I would mention. I, the I would mention me. that organized labor so took charge. To took charge to fight Galamse. Roland, the same charge the president told us that he has taken. Organized labor should come back and come and take the same charge. I was personally expecting organized labor to stand in solidarity with the democracy hub protesters who were kept behind bars and denied food, water, and medicine. I was expecting organized labor to stand in solidarity with the free the citizen demonstrators. Have you heard, maybe you haven't, but I have heard and read on Daily Guide Network how the Bono Regional Chairperson or Chairman of the New Patriotic Party claims that organized labor reached out to them and specifically mentions Joshua Alabi. That they, they, and not Joshua Alabi of, of no, not Joshua Alabi of the NDC. Professor Joshua Alabi. No, not Joshua Alabi of the NDC says that it's mentioning the name of the TUC secretary, right, to say that they approached them, that leadership of MPP, to ask that where, give them 50 million Ghana cities for them to halt the strike and the demonstration. But that's not verified. So, so, no, let, let me make my point. For us to verify this information, it is, it is a claim the Bruno Regional Chairperson is making. We want to hear organized labor say that this claim by the NPP is not true. Because bear in mind, the Galamse has not stopped. The threat against our lives have not stopped. But will the NPP take responsibility for anything? No. 
And that is why they would wait for organized labor to come and take responsibility. Would His Excellency Nana Adodanko Ekufuado and Dr. Baumia take responsibility for anything? Absolutely not. They can't be bothered. And the last time the president said that I don't care about the next election, I care about the next generation, he has proved beyond reasonable doubts that he simply cares about the next election. Now, how did and so party here, Sika, <coughs> so the NPP wants to make money so that they will fund their campaign activities. And so it is not about thinking about the next generation. Now, Roland, come to think of it. If President Nanado Danko Ekufuado and Dr. Baumia think about the next generation, will they look on with careless abandon for babies to be, to be born deformed? If they care, will they look on for us to consume poison food and water? But there is one thing I must draw organized labor's attention to. Are they not interested in the report that Professor Frimpong Boateng submitted to the president? And when I say this, I say this to mean that the president is complicit in this galancy. Roland, if you are not complicit, and I come to report to you as a boss that someone has harassed me sexually, and you form a committee to look into the matter, the committee submits a report to you, you get out from the, your chair, and you sit on the report for two solid years. If the president had the political will, if the president was not complicit, if the president indeed had put the job on the line, the president should have acted on the report. Now, in wrapping up, let me say that I recently heard, as Rodney was talking about the all trances, I recently heard the NPP MP for, for um, I think it's uh, Manson Kwanta, Dr. Ayuefriye, saying that the Galamseas were we imported, if you do ask your story, saying that the Galamseas were imported by the NPP. That is NDC. cheap, cheap uh, NDC. That is absolutely cheap talk. See, the NPP, under the leadership of Nanadu and Baumia, will not take responsibility for anything. And every indicator of the economy that the NDC left for the NPP, they are deteriorating it. In London, media freedom, you are a media person. The media freedom that we left when we were leaving power. Today, Afro Barometer Mr. tells us that President Nanadu and Kwekfadu is handling you, the media, with stiff-handedness. And that is curtailing media freedom. On Galamse, what was the stability level? Show the visuals of the images. Show the visuals, the health of the water and the health of the land. And on the issue of even unemployment, they have taken everything. City depreciation, cost of living. The NPP, including right. Galamse, has taken everything mm. from, from good to worse. And I think that on 7th December, let us punish the elephant. Let us take the well, elephant Nania, back to the at, bush. At the end of the day, in the you have been waters. there before. Haven't interacted with organized labor all these years. Years. If you look at that atmosphere and then you look at the outcome, as we saw yesterday, the agitation even from UTAG, represented by Professor Jampo and it all, and then you look at what the perception now is, not only on social media but also in real time, what does it tell you? What might have happened? Thank you very much, Roland. Um, let me say good morning to your viewers, good morning to my auntie and my sisters here yeah. and good morning to my friend abdul latif dan of ablikuma central and good morning to um, my flag bearer and good morning to his excellency john ramani mahama and alan Chamat. you see the point is that eh, there are 21 trade unions 21 trade unions yes, there are 21 trade unions and immediately you see this then it means that there wasn't enough consultation amongst them so there wasn't a consensus so it's even possible that if they embarked on the strike they wouldn't have gotten a quorum it's also clear that there was some kind of they said they had um, discussions with um, the president and everybody there was some kind of talks amongst them so because there was no quorum formed then you then realize that if you embark on the strike, it will not be successful. But they should have done their homework well. Because I was even surprised that the nurses, the doctors, were not prepared to be part of it. Because whatever the effects and ramifications of Galamse mm. lies at their doorstep. Because they are seeing 
the kidney diseases, the liver, the poisoning and all that. And they actually came out as doctors to say that the nation is facing a crisis. And so I do not know why they had to pull out. Okay, it's an essential service. We do agree, but there's a way that they do it. So organized labor, I believe, from what I know, didn't do enough consultation among the 21. So trade internally, union. there should have been enough consultation. Yes, because there are 21 trade unions. How did their ranks break then, envisaging, based on experience and observation? Their ranks broke because there wasn't adequate communication and there's a new leader he should learn the ropes even though he has been in the, the organized labor trade you know for a very long time joshua and cancer right he, joshua and son. And son. i saw him and i then knew i didn't know his name i'd worked with him variously so he should learn the ropes then also i i did my masters on why trade unions go on strikes and Sometimes beneath it is maybe their own interest, some request that they are looking for. So if it is given them, there are so many um, dynamics in there. But on the surface of, for Professor Jampo to come out, it means that there was some issues with consultation. A lack of consensus. Yes, and, and communication. And also even when you listen to the Achobui. The Chobwe wasn't strong. You see, we the comrades, we have a certain Chobwe, ask Anti Rodali. When we do the Chobwe, then yeah, it comes. Because the TUC are comrades. No unison. No, but this this Chobwe was weak. This TUC is no, no longer comrades. Yes, you get him. The, 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 they always be comrades. The TUC, are, I mean, the Chobwe yes, was weak. So it, 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 it presupposes that there was a problem, that they themselves didn't have a consensus. But I just want to say that, Roland, you asked me so many questions. I have to also say, I want to say that there's no commitment on the part of government. Why? Because, you see, if government is really committed to this fight, we should not be going through all this, Shari. There are soldiers who will be deployed. Soldiers have always been Suspension deployed. of the it has always, ally. It has always been. There was no ally in 2023, uh, but people were still mining and we had issues. You get you me. mean prior to 2020? Yes, 2020. Even in, yes, prior to 2021, 20, the, the airline was 2023, I guess. No, I 2022. I have to find out. Yeah, I think it's 2020. 20. And even for I think them, it was supposed to be 2020 airline, I think. 2023. 2023. 2023. So that, that allowed them to mine in the forest, right? Yes. So, uh -huh, so it's 2023. It's about a, a year ago. Before then, what was happening? Everything that the president is saying, it has been said before. And besides, he didn't even sign that letter. Does it matter? It matters. Yeah. It shows commitment. It means he, he has taken the charge himself. And I'm surprised the president wants to write the manifestos of the other parties. Is it his business to tell them that they should sign the pact? And this is in relation to... Why should they sign a pact? I mean, you, you, you are in charge. Do the work. You don't need the help of anybody. When you were going to IMF, you did not call us. It concerns Ghana. When you were going, you gave us E-Levy. You did not uh, consult us. Now, why are you saying that people should be involved in the fight? That is the, where they say they want a pact with the Palestine. Why? Why do you think that has it been... It is not his business. We want him to fight Ghana. So when they also come, they also have their own plan. They have their, everybody, they have their manifestos. They have a plan how to do it. Even the MPP that is in government... They themselves, they are always reading their manifesto to tell us what they are going to do. Do you get me? So the president cannot come and tell people to sign a pact. It is neither here nor there. You cannot tell me what I will do in my manifesto concerning Galamsey. That is not your business. Your business is for you to fight the menace that is killing us. Look, Roland, a, a friend of mine told me that somebody who spoke to him, my friend is a doctor, that two of the ladies' brothers just died. They went to the site to use cyanide and to do their things. They didn't wash their hands properly. They came home hungry, put their fingers in soup to eat fufu, and they died. Because there were, there, there were traces on their hands. The two brothers just died. This is how bad it is. But I want to tell Kofi Juma that if he's a CEO, he should know that the workers have a right to a strike. And it's a human right. So he cannot sit there and say that you sack somebody who in doesn't the constitution have. Actually. Yes, yes. It, it, is, it, is a, it is a human right. And the Labour Act. And the Labour Act. So he doesn't know. So anybody who speaks like that doesn't respect Ghanaians. 
They say it is also Kofi Juma. Of course he doesn't because how he's an experienced politician. Uh, you experience, then he should know. Maybe he's not experienced public service in law. servant. Because you see, they give up <laughs> his company. Eh? It is the one at risk because the base of the product that he's producing is water. The appetite that he produces is water. Do you get me? So at the end of the day, he should be more concerned than be on the streets with the people who are fighting. Maso Kofi Juma. Of course. Why should he say that he's going to sack the people? Hey. They have a, a right to strike. You have a right to demonstrate. It's a human <clears throat> right. It's a democratic right. In this democratic dispensation, he cannot sit down and say that you sack somebody. You can't just get up and sack a public servant because they went on strike. No, they have a right. You see, they, can't, they cannot come and intimidate Ghanaians. How? How, how are they intimidating? This is an, an intimidation. To say that if, this is not his private company. You think it's a threat? It, it is a threat. It is a threat. It is a threat. Even in your private company, your workers have a right to strike. Once they are unionized. Yes, once they are unionized. If they are not unionized, fine. But as long as they are unionized, they have a right to strike. It's a human right. As long as they don't engage in any criminality, as long as they don't destroy anything in the organization, they have a right to strike. You get me? This is a strike gone bad. And I don't like the MPP's posture of saying that, oh, it is uh, NDC, it is CPP, every time it's somebody. So in, in 2013 to 2016, when His Excellency John Dramani Mahama was hit with 15 demonstrations and strikes, was it the MPP doing it? Are they talking from experience? Because His Excellency John Dramani Mahama was hit with 15 demonstrations and strikes. But he took it in his stride. I don't ever remember anybody saying that it was the MPP doing it. And they, they did. They went on strike 15 times. And every time he himself personally met with them. He didn't let anybody else. If there's any communique that came out, he signed it himself. Now the president has signed this. Wrapping up. It means that he, he, he's, not, he's not interested. He's not committed. We shouldn't worry. Are you saying that you're looking at the posture of government and then the posture of the president and it assigns? For he, example, what they he, say that there the cannot be right a now? moratorium. Where ever. is he right now? He left here with all these problems when we are dying to go to a uh, UN. Somebody couldn't have represented him in there, the foreign minister. When we are in this crisis... This is a crisis, a national crisis. I don't understand. So you are saying that him leaving the shores of Ghana to, do, when to the, attend when, other when important the, international means that he's not committed? Is he committed? If he was committed, we would have fought this fight by now. Because he needs a lot of commitment, a lot of valor, a lot of love for the people that you, you, you govern for you to fight this because it is a health issue. Look, let me tell you before I wrap up. Some women were demonstrating. There was a footage. Some women were demonstrating in, I think, at Memphis East. Mm? They said they, 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 uh, we should do Galamse. Galamse should not be stopped. In the midst of, the, of the, this mini demonstration, without a permit, they sitting in the street. There was a car, Baumia's car, standing there. It is possible pickup. It was there in the midst of that demonstration. So it doesn't show that they are committed. They are not. They shouldn't come and waste that time. Okay, I'll ask this question. And this one, I, I think I'll throw it to everybody. And Laura, so this uh, um, goes to you. What do you think? Looking at the outcome and the position now that organized labor has taken looks to be the effect of organized labor and the perception about organized labor. Amaro, if Nana is talking about strikes <laughs> and talking about 15, in 2019 alone, Nanado had more than six strikes against anti-government strikes. You said six. In, 20, in 2022 alone, there were about five or more. Let's add what is going on now. You see, when you have a leader, <laughs> when you have a leader who will not come and tell you that I've acquired a dead goat syndrome, people will listen to him and negotiate with him proper. That is the kind of precedent we have. I kept on asking this question. <clears throat> What was the strike supposed to cure? The strike was to get enhanced efforts to deal with the issue that had bedeviled all of us. Do we look for solutions by creating problems? I was happy when I saw the notice from the Ghana Medical Association I would and be the happy. Nurses and Midwives uh, Association. Ask me why. 
we are dealing with an issue that borders on health. We are talking about people uh, feeling unwelcome, and we want the people that are supposed to take care of these people, we want them to go on strike. Let's just even imagine the uh, essential services like water and electricity, plus our medical uh, and health workers going on strike. The chaos. Does that solve the problem of health and other related issues we are talking about? We are still uh, dealing with uh, doctor to population ratios. WHO is one to uh, thousand. Ours is hovering around some one to six thousand for doctors. It's just uh, for nurses that we are doing pretty well because we are below the one uh, two thousand. And you still want these people to go and strike to solve what? To solve what? If we are coming to sit down here and talk about accusations and counter accusations, I also heard an accusation that the uh, our compatriots in the NDC had given some uh, amount of money to organize labor. Is it? Is it? Is it true? Is it that we want to solve this issue collectively, or we just want to talk about it and not have anything done about it? You are in power. So organized labor. Government has never hidden away from the fact that government is responsible yes, for so what is that. But how do you do it? You do it collectively. Even in private businesses, when you go there, they have suggestion boxes. Like I was telling you, and let's be very honest about this. You yourself indicated that between 2017 and 2019, we saw the water clearing. When did it become terrible? Up around this table, people have been mentioned within the New Patriotic Party of saying things that we disagree with. But have you heard a flag bearer or his running mate he for the new Dr. Baumia he. or Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe talk about enhancing Galamse? But I have heard the running mate for the NDC talk about coming to teach people Galamse properly. I have heard their flag bearer whose behalf in 2016, eh, 2020, people like Kweku Bwai went to Galamse sites and told them that and they're still saying it. That is what has been, has translated in their amnesty promise to Galamseyers on the site. Well, yesterday, right. I, 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 I made, I made so this interjection, may, and I'll do that may, again, Laura, to, Laura, to, Laura to, I, yes. think, I, I think that all of us, when we yes. want to make public commentary, yes. yeah, we do the politics of it, yes. but what the former president did say yes. in that media encounter, yes. and subsequently that also yes. has been the refrain and the line of yeah. communication is that if you want to fight Galamte, Galamte, there has to be the commitment. Yes. In relation to the prosecution, yes. you don't go and prosecute those who do the menial jobs yes. at the you site. Know. While you leave out those who do the funding, the those campaigns. who perpetrate it at the top level, because then it doesn't create a lot of equity Baro. at the end of the day. And that has been the line of communication. How, how, how is that Baro. bad? Let's use Media General as an example, as an entity. We sit on the show. If you make comments that are not warranted, will, we go and, will the police arrest Madame Beatrice Sajiman? How is that related to this? I want to. No, I'm just asking you a question. No, you, you... If you commit a crime okay. on set, mm -hmm. you go against the laws of this country in terms of journalism and all that. Will we go and arrest Madame Beatrice Ajima? If it is being instigated by Madame Beatrice Ajima, then the state as, a, as the lead. How do you know if it's being instigated by uh, Madame Beatrice Ajima? When you have the one perpetrated the crime, Why, are the you only say, time are you saying, know, are you saying time, that are you saying that Paparo, are you saying that those who have been Paparo, prison, those who Paparo, are doing the are Paparo, those funding like those we find Paparo, in the water bodies? Paparo, we sit here, right? I, no, I asked you a question. Paparo, you made a you made a comment and I asked you a specific I question. Asked, yes. So I, so so the question and we have to lay the preamble. We have a number of people doing the menial work they they, they, Did you they 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 collect they collect the latrite or whatever Paparo, raw material what I'm saying, then they do the no, processing no. are you saying the same people are can those I, who buy the chamfines I... those who put their boats they are the people who buy the machinery they import the cyanide the mercury and as a result of that when you prosecute them imprison them that's enough Paparo, when you make, because that's the position of the make, former president when you breach the laws does that and you are arrested how 
do we know that you are the one? You are not the one. Someone is instigating. Who does the prosecution? It's true. It's true investigation. Who does, who does the it's prosecution? It's true in, uh, uh, investigation, right? That you know who is behind it. We sit down over the years. You didn't answer my and, question. Paro, please, if you keep interjecting, how do I make... No, because any, you asked me a question, so I also asked you a question. But you didn't answer the question I asked, I asked you. you. Which question I was that? I asked you that if you perpetrate a crime on sex, Will we go in and, and I answered you, and, I, right. and, I, and, and I, you said if she is instigating it. Yeah, so that's my response. You don't like my being, response. How will we know if it's being instigated? Uh, she's the one instigating. But you are the first point of call. If you don't give uh, evidence so the, to it, so the one, the one back, prosecutor should mean investigate. You the one, that doesn't mean you are the one who bought the equipment here. I don't want the, the equipment you are using here. The moment I decide that I am coming to TV three to partake in the discussion. I'm, I'm, I'm also so those liable. who bought the champagne, imported the mercury, etc., and fund the activity for which they are they, they are not they are not supposed to be liable. Do you know them? Do you know them? What's the work of the prosecution? Them? Exactly. So they should do they should do it. And what does the president have to do? The president. And that's where there's a lack of commitment. A, where is where, when you say there's a lack of commitment? Where is it? I just mentioned that there are 14 courts. Imagine the president going to, uh, talk, uh, to uh, make uh, decisions for the judiciary. It will be the same people who say. But the laws that are supposed to ensure that these things are done. You haven't heard of the Witness Protection Act. You haven't heard of Right to Information Bill. You haven't heard about all the legislations that have been put in place. If I mention the office of the uh, special prosecutor, now you say, oh, it hasn't worked. But he has been set up to do what he's supposed to do. The person there is independent. Rodale, what do you make where, of all Where did the, 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 that you the, the, the position that organized labor finds itself? Let's, and what do you think now is the things. perception and reputation, top of the mind, from the ordinary Ghanaian about organized labor? Roland, I don't think um, um, we should politicize this issue of galamsi. What we've been doing is politicizing galamsi. We shouldn't. It's, it's a problem that is affecting every Ghanaian. And as such, we should not play into these people did and these people did not. It shouldn't be the argument now. Organized labor are people that are actually, if you look at the whole scenario, you ask yourself, shouldn't we be blaming organized labor as well? Who are members of organized labor? Organized labor are the very people who have been uh, 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 appointed to various positions and they are supposed to implement certain laws that should have stopped this whole galamse. But did they do it? No. We sit and we listen to the, uh, uh, the CEO of the Minerals Commission saying that they don't have enough staff and then their budget is not enough. Since when did he get to know that the budget was not enough? Since when did he get to know that the staff were not enough, that they don't have supervisors, mm. they don't have technical staff and the likes of it? So organized labor by itself should also bear the blame because at the end of the day, organized labor is supposed to be making sure that the jobs that are given to them, that is to supervise, to make sure that they go to the Galamse areas, make sure that they are doing the right thing, implement the laws. There are laws in this country concerning mining. Have these laws been followed up on? Are they implemented? Are they enforced? These are the questions that we should also be asking organized labor. So if at the end of the day, organized labor decides to say that, look, we are going on strike or we are going to, to strike because of this, then there must be a problem somewhere. And one of those problems is that organized labor is trying to tell us that maybe we are not getting the support that we are supposed to be getting from government to fight this. And why am I saying this? We got a, a, a Professor Frimpong Boateng report and nobody worked on it. This was a report that could have been worked on. Does it mean that the, 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 the police do not see these people? We've seen clips of police people allegedly going to collect money and, and walk away and watch uh, uh, illegal miners work. We've seen uh, clips of military men going apparently to collect money and watch illegal miners work. So. All of these things just come to tell us that there is a problem within organized labor itself. It is either they don't have the logistics to work with, or it is so partisan, so polarized, that this is exactly where we will find ourselves. When you have a whole trade union congress that cannot come out with one voice, and everybody else comes out with their own version of what they ought to do or what they ought not to do. And to say that GMA, Ghana Medical Association, would have been treating uh, uh, sick people. This is not the first time that Ghana Medical Association... for the sake of public health. Well, for the sake of public health. When it comes to their own remunerations and their own benefits, they do go on strike. 
We were in this country when there was a strike and the Cuban doctors, the Cuban medical brigade decided to go to work. You understand? So this politicization has been going on for a while. It is not now. So all we are saying is that organized labor somehow have disappointed us. They have disappointed us for calling off their, or suspending it because every Ghanaian wanted them to come and tell us exactly what the problems were. Now, organized labor and their perception and what we have to make of them, knowing that this is not the position they've taken. And so, Roland, I still stand by my argument that we counted on organized labor as Ghanaians to win this war against Galamse. We counted on organized labor because Nana Adodanko Ekufuado and Dr. Baumia have not been fair to Ghanaians. In fact, they don't mean well for the country. On one hand, Nana Adodanko Ekufuado says, it will take the next NPP government to solve the problems we have. Dr. Baumia says, well, I have the solutions. But I'll keep it so, like my boss has said, the next administration. And so beyond organized labor, it stops with the president and his vice. It stops with them. See, the NPP and the Nadan Kwekufuado would always go for the low-hanging fruits. You think that's what they've done now? Remember when they wanted How to so? pass E-Levy? They actually ambulance sick members of parliament into parliament to actually get it passed. Whatever it will take, Roland, while squinting your eyes, that is the truth. And so if you can go heaven and earth to actually get E levy passed, to actually pass bet, bet, uh, uh, levies, to actually, without calling all of us at this table and calling Ghani and say that, come and let us sign a pact. I'm giving $10 million to my daughter. Ambulance spare pass contract. Come and let us sign a pact. I want to dig the world's most expensive hole. $58 million. Come and let us sign a pact in this PDS scandal. Come and let us sign a pact for the one day, one scandal that the N N NPP has taken us through. But after the distractions, you want us to come and sign pacts. And we think that, so just people say that, oh, when you sign, it, it, I mean, then you are making progress. So you will sign the pact. What are we talking about? What happens to the names that were mentioned in the Professor from Pomp Watting report? Are they also signing pacts? And would it take the pact to stop people like Charles Ousu, the director of operations at the Forestry Commission, to stop Galamse? Would it stop the likes of John Buedu? Would it stop the likes of Lord Kombe? Would it stop the likes of Charles Nitego Tegu and the likes of Frank Asiedu Bequin and the likes that have been mentioned? See, even personal assistants were mentioned in that report. And we think that it will take a pact. Let me, you see, you should have corrected your act. And I'll mention her name again. There's one trick about the NPP. Anytime you call them to accountability, they say, don't call my name. We shouldn't call your name. Whose name should we call? It is time for accountability. And then we will drag your name till you do the right thing. He says our running mates, Professor Nana Jeno Pokwajima, says that he will support people to do galamse. Roland, you should have corrected her. Or to correct her, maybe your producer should be playing that tape for us. What she said was that jobs are non-existent. And the NPP has failed to create jobs. It tells in the unemployment rate that we have. And so if government hasn't created jobs, what can we do? We would support people as a government, that is the NDC, so that people can mine legally and in environmentally sustainable ways. You should play the video. There is no way, I'm sure that somebody at this table has comprehension problem, that the, prof, the good prof said that the NDC will support people to do galamse. You should play the tape so that she will point out to us where the venerable prof said that. The elephant is distracted, but for the levels of distraction that we have seen under this elephant, it is, it is, it is, it is Laura, to please don't, don't, don't interject me. I will mention your name. I will mention your name. She's making reference to you because you mentioned no. What I'm saying is that, 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 it is Nana Adodanko Ekufuado and Dr. Bahumia that have emboldened the NPP to be kingpins of Galamse. If you are not complicit, 
you will not actually confiscate a report. You will actually tag a committee to work. And that is typical of the president. That's what he does. He will put you to the job and sabotage you. We heard that with Martin Amidu. We have heard that with Professor Frimpong Boatin. And so in wrapping up, what I'm saying is that he wouldn't take a pact. And organized labor maybe, maybe should come again. Their requests to government have not been met. In instance, they said they are calling for immediate evacuation of all mining equipment. Are you telling me that when you go to Galamse sites right now, there are not uh, 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 equipment over there? Tell me which of the, the, the requests made by org organized labor has actually, in their own words, with immediate effect that they were calling, has been met by government to warrant that they call off their strike. And so in wrapping up, the good people of Ghana would punish the NPP for the wreck and havoc they have caused to our health and our livelihoods. Um, the good people Roland, of Ghana I, I can, the two of you. I can see that you are, you are pressed <laughs> you're, with time. You are both good enough. Um, the organized labor asks for a state of emergency, but they haven't gotten it. Mm. Or they told us that... The moratorium to be yeah, placed. Yes, they told us that um, mm. whatever demands that they made, government has met them, or government has... I mean, oblige them their request. But they were very emphatic about the state of emergency, and it has not been granted. So it, the government has not obliged them their request. I mean, whatever went on that we are here today, it, it is an affront to everybody because organized labor is, represents most of Ghanaians' mm, workers, mm. and most people work, and it's a chunk of this nation we are talking about. So it's unfortunate. You think they're disappointed? Yes, they, 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 they have. They should have done their homework in a better fashion. Because and all, the, all the accusations about uh, money trading and all that, they should come and say something so that we know we can have some confidence in them. But Lara too was saying something, my sister. You said that um, if, if there's a problem and you, you, you breach the, the, the reference to the chief executive. Madam. You see, if Madame Beatrice is the one who, ha who has a certain editorial policy and behind the scenes and you are exacting the editorial policy, whoever sits here will be arrested. Do you get it? Whoever sits here will do the same thing and will be arrested. And I stand with His Excellency John Dramani. That's even why the company is even sued in addition yes. to me. I, I stand I stand I, I stand with His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. I will stand with him today. I will stand with him tomorrow. I will stand with him forever. If he says that the people who have been arrested and put in jail, he will release them. Because they are not the guilty. These are hungry young people who Nanado has failed to create jobs and they found themselves there. I am even surprised that he says that free SHS is helping. People are getting educated. But you still have these young ones at these sites, loads of them yeah. working in Galamse, which is a very dangerous venture. So if anybody says that because His Excellency Mahama says that he will release certain people, he's supporting Galamse. No, he wants justice to be done because the MPP government knows the people who are behind the scenes, who are in charge of the Shamfans, who are exporting the illegal gold. These young ones there, do they have access to the international gold market? The gold that is being um, extracted from the ground, is it being kept in this country? They are exporting it. The, this thing, the police, our Ghana police, they are good with intelligence. Are you telling me they cannot fetch out the people behind the scenes? They can. Look, Roland, we are joking with this. We are talking politics with it. But it's a very serious matter. Look, this weekend, the water flew through my tap and I was excited. I poured water, put it in a kettle. I wanted to drink tea. I'm not a tea person, but I'm trying. They said green tea is good. So I'm trying. And I mean, I tried. I boiled the water, put it in a flask, and... I saw particles coming to the top. The top of the water was covered with brown particles. And I was scared. This is water from my tap, which is purported to be clean. In Accra here. In Accra here, which is purported to be clean. And I, I mean, I mean th for me, I was like, what is the meaning of this? So we are facing a certain kind of danger that we should not 
I mean, take it for granted. Existential threat? Existen it is a threat. We are in a national crisis. A national, national cri crisis? Yes, that we need to deal with. And not 14 regions in this country are doing galamsey. In the forests, in the rivers. And this is where we get our livelihood, water and food. And they are being contaminated by cyanide and mercury and all manner of chemicals. And Nanado doesn't care. He signs a pact or, or, or a letter and it is signed by Eugenie. You should sign that letter for us to see that you are committed to the ingredients in the content of the letter. Before I end, let me say good morning to my very good friend. Juliana Amwako, is it Juliana Amwako? <laughs> of, is she uh, also fighting Galamsey? Uh, <laughs> yes, he works with the Labour Commission in in uh, Takra. Yes, he, she's fighting Galamsey. Everybody, you see, this Galamsey fight eh, should not be limited to a few people. You if we don't fight, we come please, please, it, it, it's not coming. Please, let me finish. Right. You see, right. you see, your interjections are becoming too much. Yes. 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 Because yes. you see, if I say that, I'm not saying that the actual fights. The ingredients, the, the, the mechanics, the equipment that we need to fight, the force that we need to fight, the logistics. It should come from government, the commitment. Government is not committed whatsoever, I'm telling you. Because if you government... You can clearly see, eh? I can clearly see, because if government was committed, you see, see crime, please, crime <laughs> is crime. Let's all come people, together. People, and people, are still saying people, I'm not saying let's... I haven't mentioned the name, let's come together. Please put Laura mic off. She's uh, I'm not saying to come together. Oh, I'm not oh, talking about come together. Oh, oh, Saparo, oh, please, let me, let me yes. finish. You see, the point is that it is not this coming oh, together. <laughs> coming together, that is not... You see, somebody... <laughs> When, when you are in the family, oh, Papa, you are the father of the house. <laughs> you are the one who gives direction and you are the one who helps to give direction. It's, it's always good that a yeah, man is yeah. in the house. Hey. Even the Bible says that the uh -huh. man takes the lead. So right now, the man we have is Nanado Danko Ekufu Yet you stand with someone. You stand with Baumia. <laughs> I start, why, why do you have a problem that I stand with somebody? I will always I will stand with him on this matter. Right. Whether you like it or Daniel, not. Let me go up to the line. Um, I have um, a member of the coalition <laughs> against Galamse, uh, the writer, and Carol Annan. Uh, Carol, good morning to you. Good morning, Rola. Uh, are you disappointed with the current position taken by organized labor? And then also the the resultant reaction and position of government in terms of the actions they've taken so far as a coalition. Thank you very much and good morning to your viewers and your listeners and to the panel you've got in the studio. Um, first of all, the coalition is made up of several groups and several um, organizations that have come together. So, you know, the groups include labor, they include media, they include religious groups, they include um, youth groups, they include academia, other pressure groups, traditional leaders, and they include individuals. So, you know, labor is just one part of it. And let's be clear, organized labor have ways of doing things, and organized labor does things that we, are, we, we, we don't all participate in because they do them as organizations. So basically for us, the focus is not on what so much on what organized labor has done now, but the focus is on making sure that we continue with the advocacy to ensure that this menace stops and we save our own lives and the lives of our children and our children's children. That is what is of absolute importance to us. So we speak and we will continue to speak and advocate about how bad Valente is and the dangers that it poses to life and, and, and of humans and animals, to plant life, and generally to our very existence as a people. That is what our focus is. And so, for us, we respect what organized labor has done, but it will not deter us from doing what we, are, we always intended to do, which is to put pressure on government to be citizens and not spectators, and to get actions 
and to get the people to begin to appreciate even better what the implications of this activity is and what it so madam Anand, what action then is going is being taken today what today action we are we are declaring us uh, or we are beginning our, our protest through um the, the wearing of red so we are starting a wear red campaign it can be a red band it can be a red um, a, a, a red band on your on your car it can be anything red and on friday we will wear red as in red apart so on on a daily basis anything red but on friday is red friday we will wear red and we will do same on sundays we will also wear red to church we will encourage our, our muslim friends to wear red to the mosque you know red is our col the color of our protest but we are going to continue this to the point where every Ghanaian is who, who really loves Ghana and who is concerned about their well-being, their health, their wellness, their peace of mind, and their ability to afford to live in Ghana. Because when we, are, we start importing water or we start trying to treat water and remove uh, metals from water at the cost that we expect we, we envisage it to come with, I don't think many people will be able to afford water. Mm. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Car Carolan, and, and representing the Coalition Against Galamse. They have declared a state of wearing red. There's a protest um, that being commenced today. They will go to church on Sunday, and that's another period for a prayer. Um, for no, it, no, that, no that, that's that's just a picture. Uh, so as it is, uh, we have to end the discussion this yes, morning. But yes. uh, my, name that, was, that, my name was that, mentioned. No. So, no, no, Papa, so, my so, name so, was so mentioned be... and what I'll say was misconstrued. Yeah, I'll right. give you a minute. Listen, a minute. Mm. I insist that this is a collective fight. And I, in my opening, I said the water and all these issues doesn't know color, doesn't know creed, doesn't know religion. Mm. But you see, we also need to hold everyone that signing a pact, what do we say? Government is to continue. Signing a pact is a commitment to everybody seeking to lead this country's commitment today. So if some say they won't sign, that is up to Ghanaians to judge. But go and watch, go and watch that video. Go and watch that video of Professor Jane Nano Pukwajan. She said, yeah, be -ba -be -chum -se -ye -ye -galam -se -ye. What is Galam say? It's, it's illegal. Thing that Dr. Me. And let me tell you, saying. let me tell you, like the analogy of them, the amnesty they are the amnesty they are promising. Papa Ro. If people are not there on site doing what it's supposed to be, uh, what they are doing now, well, it's when people bring in their machines and all that, what would they happen? And when people are arrested, I, I, I they are not arrested on party basis. I'm just they are arrested for this committing is a, a crime. So if you say you are going to leave the people who have committed a crime, then that is absolutely not yeah. And they you have to that will be in power. Let's not politicize this Galamse thing. I'm actually still on that point that we should not politicize the Galamse issue. Because protesters, listen, protesters shot, were shot at in one of these, that was, I think, Wasa East by a Chinese. You understand? Chinese people are in there shooting people. Then there's another case that I read where um, Galamseyers were, yeah, were, were giving out warning shots and the parliament chief had to come in. So at the end of the day, if we are not careful, then we have people also demonstrating. That's at the end of the day, we are going to have uh, minors against other people, against the citizens. And it's not going to augur well for us. I am just saying that this thing must be fought on a non-partisan line. Let us all come together and fight it, non-partisan, without this kind of polarization that we are having. Because so, at the end of the day, both NDC and MPP, you are all guilty <laughs> of what I'm saying. No. And so, and so a, a quick correction. The name I intended to mention was Joshua hmm? Sade, um, TUCM uh, secretary. Okay. And to and to and to, and to so state a, that a, if a, anybody, answer them, please. We, we are still on the show. <laughs> if anybody at, at this table thinks that what the prof said, Professor Nana Jenopokwa Jiman, meant that she was actually instigating people to do more galamse. I repeat, the person has a comprehension problem. But what did the NNPP tell us? They told us they have the men. You have the men to fight galamse. We can't find the men. We can't even find boys in the NPP. We have the men to, to, to stabilize the city. We can't even find them. See, 
we can't trust the king pings of Galamse and Galamse. Uh, uh, Roland, you see, the point is that I disagree with Auntie Rodeling. You see, we, we, who brings the Chinese people? We have to politicize. Who brings the? If you talk about politics, you are talking about the people in power. Who allow the Chinese people to come into this nation through the borders? Whether road, they are not ghosts, you mean? They, yes, they come here and they are given the permit to enter. Is it not the government in power who is doing that? And if they are living here without the necessary permit, who is allowing them to live here? Mm. Do you get me? Mm. And government has the machinery to fight. If you are in opposition, you don't have access to the police, you don't have access to the military, you don't have access to speedboats, mm. you don't have any, any business going to monitor the borders of the Galamse areas or to deal with them. So, I mean, it is the responsibility of government to be in this fight for Ghanaians. Thank you very much, Nania, and then also Laura too, and then uh, Auntie Rodeline. Thank you as well, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, you have to dial the short code star 446 hash. You pick the range of the numbers 1 to 39. You get to win big 20 times, 40 times, and 400 times your stake. And you get to win cash every evening at 7 p.m. And then also on Sundays at 6 p.m. Now, early birds, they also love Dewa Chop Money. And again, at 10 a.m., you make sure you use that short code dial star 446 hash. The range of the numbers, once again, 1 to 39. You win the same number of stakes. You can go online and then play at uh, dewa-nla.com. And uh, just in case you need help, please make sure that for customer service experiences and then also clarifications, you call the number 055-62-59249. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you the latest in sports.